Welcome to the Queens County Board of Education work session for September the 15th, 2021. Do I have a motion to? Yeah, I make a motion to move into closed session pursuant to uh, Article 3-305B to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction and any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Second. A motion is second. All those who are here say aye. 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 Ayes happy. We'll be back at 5 o'clock. Thank you. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, everybody had a chance to look at the agenda? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to amend the agenda to include 5.08 titled New QACHS Telephone System? Do have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the amended agenda? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You've had a chance to look at our revised human resource and substitute budget our support. And I think the only thing was we had a person uh, put on here twice on a bus driver. That was the only thing. So, Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the revised human resource and substitute bus driver report as presented on September 1st of 2021? Second. I have a motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, 303, approval of minutes for the closed session for September the 1st. Everybody had a chance to review those? Yes. Do you have a motion? I make a motion to accept the closed session minutes for September 1st of 2021. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, we have approval of minutes for September 1st for open session. Yes, Mr. Smith, may I uh, make a motion to accept the minute, the open session minutes, approve the social uh, open session mis minutes on September 1st of 2021. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, moving on to informational items. Um, Sheriff Altman. everybody good evening okay. sir how's everybody's day going doing well good 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 to see you thanks board and thanks uh madam superintendent appreciate your time tonight um one of the things i think is important and i appreciate your invite again is the uh, great cooperation relationship that we all have in working with the um, school system and transparency on that i kind of want to give you an update on a couple of the things that we're doing um, so far this school year, this school year has started off really, really well, which we're glad to see that. Yay. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to talk to you about our school resource unit and I think I can make this full screen here. Um, our school resource unit is still out there. Um, the deputies are working in all the schools uh, and roving through us, as well as the supervisors. So all our schools are covered. Um, we had an issue this morning with some traffic concerns down at Kent Island High School, and our staff uh, worked with your school staff to address quickly, and we really appreciate that. That's kind of one of the things I think that the community likes to see is when there's a problem that comes up, the communication's there, and it is, and that we're able to resolve those issues very, very quickly. And thanks, Sid, for your help with that today. Thank you, sir. That really, uh, really meant a lot to the community that was calling. I guess you're seeing an increase in ridership uh, in cars versus buses, so that kind of creates some traffic congestion down there at the school. So with that being said, um, traffic control plans, uh, appreciate the help from the Board of Ed and your flaggers that you all have out there, helping us at Sutlersville and uh, other school sites throughout the county, getting the buses out and the cars. A lot of times the deputies are focused on the activities of when the school is being released and are not able to get out there to uh, help the buses and parents get out. So I think we're improving on that and uh, appreciate your support for that program with your flaggers that you have in the schools. As they catch me every day out here in front of the... <laughs> They catch me too. <laughs> they do every day. <laughs> that guy's good. I think when he sees me come and he walks out with the stop sign, I was like, come on, I was just it's a party thing. I was the last car, you know. So. <laughs> but anyway, we're very willing to stop. Um, like I said earlier, communication with the board's been great, and I really appreciate. Uh, 
really appreciate all that. Kind of give you an update on the DARE program, which we're really excited about this. Um, the DARE program is actually kicking off this month at Graysonville Elementary School. There are four scheduled class dates for that uh, DARE program. So we're really looking uh, forward to getting that in there. Um, there will be eight additional dates in October and then four additional dates in November in Graysonville. And then we'll be moving on to another elementary school in the county. Um, so that's really exciting to see. Um, that we're getting the DARE program back and it's great for our kids and they've heard a lot of positive feedback from parents about that curriculum and the involvement of law enforcement and the students. So. Our goal eventually is uh, middle schools and high schools as the program progresses. And that is my very short brief update for you all. Very good. <laughs> any any questions or anything you all would like to discuss or topics I can I would get back to you on? I would mind. Sure. Sheriff Hoffman, have you yes, seen an increase in uh, underage drinking? Um, in Queen Anne's County? We, we've, we've seen it's, it's, it's been consistent. Okay. I mean, it seems like some of the ones that used to drink are now old enough to drink, um, but we always tend to have this population that's coming up behind them. Um, I, it's been very consistent throughout the years, so we're still getting underage alcohol complaints, yes. Okay, that's unfortunate, but thank you. It is, it is, and I know that the survey is done every few years, the adolescent survey, which is really informative. Um, you know, and the honesty of the kids is important as well to, to let us know what's going on and how we can help future grades coming up with prevention and education so yes ma'am I know when we started the thing and I think Sid started this our bus cameras how's that working I know we had a little bleep in the beginning which was not county's fault which was the manufacturer not match right the people exercising that thing by some misinformation but are we back on steady track with that now helping us out we are and i uh, actually have an expert here in the bus patrol program is <laughs> lieutenant mark neal who is uh, very willing to come up and answer that question briefly <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we are back live with the bus patrol program. Uh, matter of fact, as of today, we had 37 citations. Oh 37? Seven. One day? Just for today, yeah. Oh, my God. So it's, it's increasing as the, as the traffic increases. So I well, imagine throughout the rest of the year, it's going to be pretty steady. Now, remember back, I knew 213 was an issue up by 544. I mean, there's certain places that are certain hot spots, or is it just it's generally people not paying attention? County wide. Anyway, matter of fact, two of the citations I approved today uh, involved a driver driving past a bus stop where the children are about to walk across the road. Oh, my God. And but they camera. are receiving tickets now. It's on camera. And it's on camera. Citations in the mail. Um, it's similar to um, speed enforcement cameras where it's just a, a fine and points. And then they'll pay that or they can go to court. Now, if we find repeat offenders or the same vehicle, is there anything we can... I mean, I, I just, you know, there's, look, I'm not saying, I'll be the first to say I might go 60 miles an hour to 55, but passing school buses is just, I mean, I just, you know, because that, those kids rely on our bus drivers. When they let them off that bus, they feel they're safe. And it's just, you know, it's like walking off a cliff if they're not. Yeah, we're taking that data from the school year and we're going to do focus enforcement in those areas where we're seeing okay. an excessive amount of violations. It's one violation is too many. Yes. I mean, there's a danger to a child's life just in one violation, but areas where we can do focus enforcement, we are going to map. That should help us with when you see these tickets so you know where they are, so that can help us maybe by hopefully. We're going to map those out. Correct. It's all GPS tracked, and, and if we have multiple violations for the same violator, we're in constant communication with bus patrol. They provide us that data. Okay. When they need it. But we had 37 in one day. Okay. It's not just the, the stop sign runners. I mean, I've seen right in front of my house, it's a busy road. The bus stops to back up into the driveway because she's disabled and they aren't watching, they almost rear in the bus. So they're just not paying attention. And we try to make it so that, you know, every stop's not gonna be door side, but we try to make it, you know, if you're following a bus, you're like, why are they taking that crazy path? I mean, a lot of times we're going a little extra mile so the student doesn't have to cross the road. Mm -hmm. But if you don't mind, I'd just like to say thank you mm -hmm. to Sheriff Hoffman and Lieutenant Meal because they do put a lot of extra time into this. They're the ones that get the ticket information and Lieutenant Meal goes through it to approve it. I mean, it is time, you know, consuming. And I also wanted to thank you because 
we were the first county that had all of our SROs certified through the Maryland Police Commission mm -hmm. yeah. back in 2019, and that was a, a great feat in uh, you know being in there with you guys. So thanks a lot for all you guys Thank do. You. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Next question. Yes, sir. It's going to get fall. Our air conditioning will start stop, and we don't heat schools yet, but we're doing our air circulation. Are we, I know you guys are vigilant on making sure security. We have our front, but, you know, the back door, the windows, and are we keeping an eye on all of it? I, it's our responsibility, too, but as far yeah, as your this, officers to help us. Yeah, and that, that was an issue we had last year a little bit. Um, so one of the things we're really focusing on this year, Lieutenant Mule and I were talking about this the past couple of days, is that we're focusing on schools that we know there's an issue, and we're going to make sure, uh, you know, that we, we are letting you all know if we do find any violations. Our number one goal is to keep that building secure. No doors propped open and every single visitor, even us, going through the front lobby to make sure that we they know we're in the building and that we follow the protocols. So, and, and there's the badges, badges, yes, badges. I agree. Right, the the everybody has to have a badge on it. Yeah, and you know, that's not just, that's not a control thing. That's basically to ensure the safety of who's in that building. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, in the past, we've seen people walking in schools, you have no idea who they are. And we follow the same policies in our office. Um, the courthouses have the same policies, so it should be no different in our schools. So. And our portables, are they locked during class time? Ben? Yes. Oh, okay. I just, I can just see sometimes because of the COVID and you know, ventilation, people are, you know, more, we need, you know, and, and it's good to have as much fresh air as possible. We got to sure. also keep in mind it's an opportunity for the wrong people to, yeah, the bad guys and girls are waiting for this opportunity mm -hmm. in our schools. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, it really is. I mean, sh every window should be open, every door should be open. We just, we're not, we're in a different day and time, and we just can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. just, and there's so many out there waiting to make Queen Anne's County uh, in the news, to put them in the news. I know you stay in touch with Sid and Dr. Salins. I'd love to have you back in a couple months, get an update. If you find out there's issues that you'd like to come to the board or on, you know, to sit there and do this. And when I hear that many bus violation, <laughs> I'd like to hear that number again, hopefully. <laughs> we'd, li we'd like to do, you know, we'd like to have the open relationship with you all where we do every month, every two okay. months. Every other month would be perfect. You know, we'll limit it down, scope it down to like 10 minutes or something like that. Just right, well, I think it just, you know, gets us an update and keeps people aware of some of the things you face and our school system face at sure. this time. Yeah, it's We're in a unique county where we can actually pick up the phone and be able to talk directly to the sheriff or Lieutenant Meal. I mean, they answer the phone 24 seven. So it's a great relationship with you guys too. So it's working out, it's working out good, but we'd like to convey what we're doing and mm -hmm. and if you guys see anything, let us know as well. Is your daughter feeling better, I hope? <laughs> my daughter is actually uh, feeling better than my wife is feeling right now. Uh -huh. so <laughs> Can I ask one more is... question, do you mind? Yeah. Since it's, it is September and Queen Anne's County went purple, you know, in regards to getting the word out about substance abuse, how about our, our, our minors with the opioid count? Because I don't know if you remember back in uh, 2003, 2004, Queen Anne's County had the highest jump, 150% at that time increases in opioid use. We were, like, we were like off the chart, uh, number one in the uh, state of Maryland. Have we eased off in that respect or have you seen anything? Um, we're, we're very consistent in the opioid numbers year over year. Okay. Um, we don't see a lot of younger people with the opioid related issues. I'd have to look at the number. I don't have that number in front of me, but I wanna say that the average uh, overdose is probably somewhere, and, and I, I could be wrong on this, uh, somewhere between like 35 and 54. A year. 35, 54 yeah. years age. old. Age. Oh, age, age right. Age range. Yeah, we're okay. not seeing a lot. Our biggest issue that our deputies on the street and probably allied law enforcement agencies are facing is the issue of medicinal marijuana and the, the issues of marijuana itself. Um, yeah, th we've got, I mean, in the school system as well as out in the public, we've got a really huge task in front of us. Uh, it took us 50 years to tell people that you can't drink and drive. And now it's going to take us 50 more years to tell people you can't smoke and drive. And I mean, the other day I never, I've never heard a commercial saying, you know, don't do dope before you drive a car. And the other day I heard the commercial saying, you know, don't, don't smoke a bowl before you drive. But yeah. 
we're and that survey that you spoke about definitely gives us good data and usually um, students use gate what we consider gateway drugs to get to um, right. an addiction that you're speaking of where that's why the addiction is at an older you know older age because I think our students use gateway opportunities to start with and alcohol that leads is, them to right Ms. To Harper stated earlier yeah alcohol or, I think or marijuana is, our... is considered really that gateway opportunity I was driving by a reason why I'm asking on this because I drove by Stevensville Middle School and all those signs are out there you know the access to mom and dad's you know mm -hmm. medicine cabinet the the drinking the, and it just made me think and I knew you were coming so I just wanted to yeah. put it out there to the community that this is a real problem you know and sadly Queen Anne's County we've lost you know students or recent oh. graduates I yes mean, you know to alcohol related parties oh. events and things like that and, and you know since 2013 we have lost so many students uh, the, uh, graduated students yeah it's it's uh, yeah be our goal and, and look I mean, and there's people that have opinions on you know <clears throat> whether something should be legal or not legal or whatever the case is but our goal at the end of the day is you know to keep every child or young adult safe you know, what they choose to do in a safe environment it's up to them but not on the road not in the school yeah. not at other people's houses have any other questions? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Gabe. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Okay. okay our next information item is our COVID-19 metrics update. Yes. So um, Amy's getting there. Okay. Um, and, but. Um, as the board has asked me just to do an update yeah. each time. So the data is just updated in there. Um, but over and above that, I really wanted to share while we're getting that um, up for everyone to see is that um, we have gone back to making sure that we're transparent about positivity rate here. Um, so all of that information can be found on the website and it's updated every Friday at close of business. When you so, say the positivity, that's what's happened in Queen Anne's County. Yes. So on our website, um, you can go to our website and at the close of business on Friday you'll see the numbers for that week so we don't we're not doing it cumulative we're doing it just like last year where every week we post the numbers there um, and so I encourage the board members to go there for that information um, the first week we had five total cases and remember that's not um, it doesn't parse it out by student or staff so it's important to know that but we had five the first week in our, so in our close system of business, in our system um, between staff and students we had at the close of business on Friday from week Week one, five. Um, close of business last Friday was 24, and um, today, the last time I looked at it before we walked in this meeting, we had a total of 20 already this week. Halfway so, through, halfway right. Through so our positivity rate is there. Um, we are um, following protocols. Um, I think when I compare ourselves to other districts, um, you know, they're seeing similar. I think we're um, doing a little bit better, honestly, because in some of our schools, we're really able to meet that um, social distance distance extent of things um, even if lunchtime we've added the two tents as we talked about before at the two high schools we're adding two at the middle schools we've done some other outside um, opportunities um, Graysonville ha has added some outdoor space um, we looked at um, Signa and Amy were looking at um, um, Sutlersville Middle School they had some outdoor space there that we were looking at how can we utilize that space right now um, so we really are making every effort to the, the two areas that are, are, are kind of almost forcing our hand as it relates to quarantining are lunchtime and buses. And so we're doing everything we can to spread kids out during those two times. And you just heard the sheriff say that, you know, our traffic has been increased and, and we thank the parents that can drive or the students that can drive themselves because it is helping us to get our buses under control. Um, but those are definitely the two spots where we're being forced really to quarantine based on this. CDC guidelines um, but other than that I think we're doing a great job I think our cleaning pro protocols have been in place and, and we're doing fantastic um, we're, we're adding some additional resources for our school nurses and our administrators as it relates to contact tracing 
um, because the need and demand is there. Um, going into the year, obviously, we didn't know that we were going to have that. And so we've reevaluated that. We're using some ESSER funds. We're putting in float nurses. We're doing shifts in the evening and on weekends so that contact tracing can just go straight through. Um, so we've jumped on that. We heard the need, and we've addressed it. And uh, we'll continue to address it and uh, continue to um, you know, have those cleaning protocols and continue when at all possible to make sure that students are spaced appropriately so we don't have to quarantine. Um, it's difficult though when you have a sports event, you know, or a you know, football player or a soccer player or something, it's very difficult. Um, but we really are, I mean, everybody's doing a fantastic job. I couldn't, I couldn't really say much more than that. They're, they're just, everybody's collaboratively working together. I meet with the principals, all of us meet with the principals on a regular basis. Um, and, and that's increasing communication and I think that's very helpful. So the numbers are what they are. Uh, um, we've been very consistent as you can see that. So we're hopeful that we will start to come down a little bit. Um, so there's a number. So any questions? I mean, we're, we're getting that every day, and I just see, you know, one like is that 17 percent. One day we're 16, eight, and then we're seven. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, just, and that's the chart there. You can yeah. see the 16 and 17, and we got up to 19.28, and then we've kind of been really consistent here every well, day. But I mean, you ha I haven't seen any major haven't, changes. You haven't seen any other. major changes. We're being really consistent, unfortunately, because we really want to obviously see it go down. Um, but, but when you also, you know, bring back over 7,000 students and over 1,000 staff members in the buildings, um, you're going to see that happen. So um, I think that's why we've been consistent, because we've opened schools back up. And, um, and as I said, I hope we can um, see those numbers coming down a little bit. But, I mean, it's, I mean, it's certainly everybody's independent. I just talked to their own physician. But are most of our staff vaccinated? or? Um, I don't have that percentage, okay. to be honest with you. We, um, through HR, put out um, a request for students and staff members that we would like for them to give us that information but it's, it's, um, it's because private, it so. helps us with contact tracing. Mm -hmm. So um, we did put that out, and um, we haven't had a huge response, not as big as we wanted to. And I don't know, that, Amy, do you, do you know the numbers on that? I don't know, and probably um, um, you probably don't know the numbers either. I'm looking at Michael. Um, that's voluntary. Yeah, I don't have the numbers right here. Yeah, and that's voluntary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely it's, voluntary. Right, yeah. I understand that. I just yeah. didn't know, you know, and it's a personal choice, and it's, it's you know, certainly their physician needs well, to. Well, it, it is a personal choice, but I know that right now, and, and it is out there that, um, you know, um, that uh, businesses over 100 um, staff members are being required to vaccinate or test once a week. But that's not um, us. Well, and they have it out for review right now. Uh, um, we fall under OSHA, and they're all out there getting uh, attorney opinions right now to determine um, whether they feel that a school district falls under that. So it is out there right now, and I, I don't know when that will come. I anticipate that, that, that there would be some, some things that are coming down quickly to be honest with you um, and we will you know once once we get that information the board will have it at the same time I do well, so. my concern on that video we talking employees and students are just employees. Well, that is just employees right okay, now. Okay, gotcha. That so the students employees. certainly aren't going yeah. to be that is, just, that. that is okay. just employees right now. Um, that they would fall under because we are a part of OSHA and have to go by those guidelines that we would fall under. The if, I mean, if that, we, that's asking for a class action lawsuit, don't you think? I'm well, there's some uh, suits that have already been filed, you know, by states and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to give you my personal opinion right now, but, uh, sure. you know, let's let's see what Maryland says and mm -hmm. right. and uh, what happens and again it? we'll consult with council and you know we'll, we'll yeah. take it from there exactly the board. we'll walk through the process whatever comes down um, and and we get and we'll okay. meet with council and go from and, there. and we're considering if that happened and you and, and somebody's not you know it's certain that they get have to get tested is that going to be in our schools or that well we do have a, a school program we're doing three programs through or three sites through the district to be okay. able to do testing um, because testing is a problem it's hard to get tested and um, students who may be on quarantine or need to test or staff members that are on quarantine or need to test um, it's been very difficult for them so we've partnered with we we I think I provided that information before but we looked at five different organizations and then narrowed it down to one and 
we're in the midst of signing that contract right now and okay. getting them on board. Um, and so we would be able to provide that on service site. on site for at three sites. At for three the entire, sites. Three sites for the entire district. So, um, but if, test, if that testing would be provided to students only. No, to staff and students. No, but I mean, so if your child is sick and the whole family wants to get tested, are we only doing the students or are we testing the whole family? I don't know that I know the answer to that. I'd have to go back and reread through that. I, I was so hyper focused on students and staff for our district that I didn't really look at that. Because when they um, call us, they want to get everybody, everybody in the tested. tested. Right. I don't know the answer to that. I'll have to get back to the board on that. That's something that Matt Evans could help me with, though. Well, you yeah. know, and then Mark made a good point. We wait to see what the state comes down. Yes. But devil's in the details, and some question like that's very interesting yeah. to find out how we would handle that. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you know where you, where you do that. I mean, it's you can mandate something, but then you got to make sure you have the proper ways to fulfill right. it. Yeah. Well, if you have a child quarantined who comes up positive, now the whole family is affected mm -hmm. as far as possibly younger siblings with daycares, mom and dad going to work. They're all going to need a note for something. Yeah. That's good information. Okay. Any other questions? board action items. Thank you, Ms. Hudak. You're welcome. I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Huh. Good evening, Mr. President. Dr. Salins, board members. Good for the record, my name is Jolene Smith. I'm the supervisor of special education for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I bring to you this evening um, for your approval uh, several non-public education placement tuition um, costs, I guess. Um, so I'll just go through them as they are listed on board docs. So the first one is for uh, the Benedictine School. This is for four students, um, and, and just to kind of give you an overview, um, each of these students is participating in a non-public placement, so it is a separate placement um, because they require a level of service that we are not able to provide them here in Queen Anne's County. Does this include transportation day or two? It does not. This is tuition. This is just tuition. Just yes. tuition. But it's now, multiple it doesn't, students. Four. Yes. It does include um, related service delivery as well. So if the student has, for example, speech therapy or occupational therapy, if they have one-to-one -one assistance, all of that's included in the cost. And, uh, you know, it, 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 and it's required. It's, I'm not saying that, but then we also have a bus issue. I guess Sid, uh, each so, one of them. Mr. Smith, may I make the motion so that we can have a discussion? Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I make a motion to approve the non-public uh, tuition placement at the Benedictine School for the fiscal impact dollar amount of $389,883.35, budget source FY22, unrestricted operating budget. I have a motion and a second discussion. So speaking to my motion, uh, where's Miss Jane? She's oh, not here she today. She wasn't able to be here today. Okay, because I would ask for right off the bat, where's this money coming from? And is it in, is it in, our, is it in our budget? Yes, so yeah. this is coming from our unrestricted budget. It is a budgeted item. Um, and the cost is shared between us and MSDE. So for example, um, last year, our total cost, um, we recoup kind of in terms of a, a reimbursement from MSDE, just shy of 50%. So it's more like 45%. So we contribute a, a portion of this and then MSDE also contributes a portion as well. And all of these non-public placements that you're bringing us tonight, these are new. These are not ongoing. These are these are new for this this current fiscal year, um, but these are not new as in in addition to last year's. Gotcha. These are some of the same students. Gotcha. Okay. 
and I know each year at the end of the year and through the year, we get requests to move some money around, especially special education needs more, you know, excess money in there. And that's happened, I think, in the last two years. Last seven years. Well, I've been here too, right. three. Uh, the next question, and I said, okay, so then we do to run separate buses. We try to utilize several students on each bus if we can pull that off. I mean, sometimes if somebody's coming all the way up above Church Hill and somebody's coming from Kent Island, it doesn't quite work. But we try to utilize, I mean, right now we've got some buses, special ed buses with six or eight students on there. I mean, which is quite a bit, you know, to handle. So there's only a limit how many you can, I mean, if they're in handicapped chairs and different yes. things. Yep. And Jolene does a great job working with John Murdoch, you know, helping to organize that. It's a task in itself. That's what I'm thinking. It's just, you know, it's a whole other aspect of it. And where appropriate, I mean, we have to consider, number one, that the school that the student is attending is as close as possible to their home school or to their home. Um, and, and if it's appropriate and if it's possible, we do consider those that are local or, or as close to local as possible. So for example, in this particular case, the Benedictine School, we're able to provide services for four of our students there. So it's one, in most cases, one bus run versus multiple bus runs to multiple schools. Okay, any further discussion? I have a motion to second. Uh, for uh, non-public tuition in Benedict School. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. So the second item for your approval is um, tuition for St. Elizabeth's School in the amount $121,463.63 from the FY22 unrestricted operating budget. Mr. Smith, you want me to go ahead? Yeah, we might make for any discussion if there's any. Okay, so let me make the motion, sir. Um, I make a motion to accept the uh, non-public tuition placement at St. Elizabeth's School. Uh, total f fiscal impact dollar amount of $121,463.63, pardon me, budgeted source FY22 unrestricted operating budget. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this? How many students is this? This is one student. Where is St. Elizabeth? Um, it is, um, it's actually in Baltimore City. Oh. Yeah, because it's not, it's not listed in here where it is. Okay, I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. The next item I bring before you is the tuition payment for the Phillips School um, in the amount of $52,698.60 from the FY22 unrestricted operating budget. And this is um, also for one student. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the non-public tuition placement for a student at St. Philip's School, total fiscal impact dollar amount of $52,698.60, budgeted source of FY22, unrestricted operating budget. Second. A motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Where is the Phillips School? The Phillips School is in Laurel. And I'm, in the future, I will include that on there. The next item that I bring before you is tuition payment for the Harbor School in the amount of $41,726 from the FY22 unrestricted budget. And this is also for one student. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the non-public tuition placement of a student at this Harbor School in Annapolis? Total fiscal impact dollar amount of $41,726. Budget source of FY22 unrestricted operating budget. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. And the last item that I bring is tuition for the Board of Child Care, the Strawbridge School, in the amount of $177,341.75 from the FY22 unrestricted operating budget, and this is for two students. Where's the Strawberry School? Strawberry. It is in Reisterstown, Maryland. Good gosh. So everything's across the bridge except St. Ridgely. 
Yes. Unfortunately, all uh, yeah, the we've districts on the problem. shore. Not a problem, but it's a. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the non-public tuition placement of a student, two students at the Strawbridge School, total in fiscal impact dollar amount of $177,341.75, budget source FY22 unrestricted operating budget. Second. A motion is second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. item for cafeteria tables. Yes, good evening, Mr. Smith. Uh, Dr. Saland, members of the board and executive team. My name is Carla Pullen. I'm the facilities planner, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. The first item for you this evening is the request for your approval to purchase cafeteria tables for various buildings here in the district. Utilizing one of our cooperative purchasing contracts, we are requesting new cafeteria tables for five buildings. Right now, both of our high schools either partially or fully have tables and individual chairs that they're utilizing. And as you can imagine, it's difficult to clean between lunch shifts, but in a COVID environment, it's greatly a challenge because they're doing extra cleaning and sanitizing in between all of the students. So at Queen Anne's County High School, we're re requesting the replacement of 40 tables that will replace their entire fleet. So that will allow them to easily fold everything up, push it out of the way, clean underneath, sanitize the tables, push them back down in a rapid manner, which will be helpful. At Kent Island High School, this is just their round tables that are on the outlying areas of the cafeteria. The other tables are sufficient for them right now. At Graysonville Elementary School, we're requesting 15 tables, which will replace all of their tables as well. They were first purchased in 1995. They've been welded back together many, many times and are somewhat dangerous in terms of getting them up and down. So they are definitely in need of replacement. And that at Churchill Elementary School and Kennard Elementary School, this is replacing some of the tables that have worn out and have aging parts. So this will also allow them to help with the cleaning and disinfection. So Bayside's not in here, none of those tables? No. Bayside's 1991, so those I don't believe okay. they're tables. I, I believe they've had replacement of tables, but it also is following some requests that we had from our schools and from the school leaders okay. for the, the replacement and use of ESSER funds. This has been an issue over the last three or four years, capital money and trying to get this in the budget. Yes. Uh, oh my God. And this, does this solve most of our problems as far as the stuff like you mentioned, welded stuff and stuff that's just, I know Esner's a, a thing now with cleaning and everything, it's a whole different ball game, but we actually had some tables that I feel weren't safe when people sat on them. Yes. So these are the first five requests. These are ones that have been repeated requests from our schools. So we have been hearing from some of them for three or four years that we really need to replace those. So these were the ones that we already had in the queue. We already had the specifications ready and we can quickly pull the trigger. Now I do want to let everybody know that based on the manufacturing issues that we are experiencing right now with COVID, we're looking at probably beginning of the year, if not a little bit longer before we can get these tables in. So that's the other reason that we want to expedite the orders. We can get them here as quickly as possible. Mr. Smith, with your permission, may I make a motion to approve the purchase of new cafeteria tables utilizing the Mid-Atlantic Purchasing Team Cooperative Purchasing Contract, fiscal impact dollar amount of $186,497.20, budget sources ESSER 2 funds. Second. A motion is second. Do we have any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Make that call. 
<laughs> the second item I have for you this evening is the request to purchase classroom technology for Mattapique Elementary School. Mattapique is one of our schools that has the fewest digital technology teaching tools right now. We currently only have three classrooms that have been outfitted with some sort of projector and whiteboard. This will allow us to put the short third projector as well as the new whiteboard system into all of the classrooms and several of the UA classrooms as well. So this will in essence take care of the technology for that school. Again, we are utilizing a cooperative contract. This is through the state of Maryland. We've worked closely with ComTech on the specification, and this is the projector that we're trying to standardize on in all of our classrooms so that we have a consistent use of the same product everywhere. Uh, the impact is $31,600. This is an ESSER two purchase as well. Go ahead. Uh, may I make a motion to approve the purchase of the projectors for Mattapique Elementary School? Fiscal impact dollar amount, excuse me, utilizing the State of Maryland Cooperative Purchasing Contract for Technology. Fiscal impact dollar amount $31,600. Budget source ESSER 2 funds. And this brings this school up. Do we have other schools that are going to be issues like this, or is this just the one that's the one? This one has the least amount of technology. There are certainly some other schools that we need to take a look at, and we hope to do that with our assessments going forward. We'll look at some stuff for how we... Yeah. There was a couple of issues at, at Mattapique, and one was we had the folding partitions that we had to make into permanent walls, um, and then also with the vaulted ceilings that we had in there, so we kind of had to do some modifications to actually make this even feasible to do so we've got those accomplished now we can go ahead with this part of it point of order mr smith miss morissette did second the not did second the motion just right. for clarification right and i'm just having thank discussion you. now thank you gotcha and if I could just add, again, we are looking at some sourcing issues, as you can imagine. Every school district probably in America right now is trying to buy additional technology, so we are hoping to get these in as soon as possible. We will be installing them. Our maintenance crew will be doing the installation. So again, we are looking at a little bit of time to get all of these in operation. We hope to have them fully functioning before the beginning of next school year, but as soon as we possibly can. Okay. I have a motion and a second. We've had discussion. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Okay, we have 508 amended that we have a, a request. It's a, uh, I guess it's an emergency request on our telephone system at Queen Anne's County High School. Yes, sir. Um, Queen Anne's County uh, High School, about two weeks ago, we started to develop some uh, failures with the phone system. It's about 22 years old. Um, there's, to make it easy to understand, there's eight, eight components to it. Um, you can lip along with one or two being down, but there are five of the components that are down they no longer make those um, anymore and you can't even find them on ebay we were able to find some but when you buy them on ebay there's no warranty and there's no actually some of them could do more damage to your system than what you have um, looking uh, to replace the system there with a company that we have used before um, from Salisbury, Maryland, with the assistance of uh, Skip Anthony from Corsica Telecom. Uh, right now at Queen Anne's County High School, they cannot call classroom to classroom. Um, they cannot call from the office to the classroom. The office can call out and people can call in, but there is no communication there. Um, we've already had a couple of medical issues where you know it delayed the nurse getting there. I mean, there's only so many hand radios you can use. Um, I will say this, with we've used this company at uh, Centerville Middle School, Graceville Elementary School, and um, elementary school so and what we've been able to do is right now there's about 35 landlines that go into Queen Anne's County High School at $40 a piece that we pay every month we're able with installing the new digital component we're able to get rid of 25 of those lines so you're talking about a thousand dollars a month that we will not be paying anymore when we upgrade to the digital component um, caller ID um, you know able to leave messages with teachers and things like that, we really don't have a good system that right now at that school. 
Can I ask a question? Where's the money coming from tomorrow so, waiting for a grant? We have some money left over that we can use, but we've also applied for, uh, if you know, every year the Maryland Center for School Safety does grants. Uh, it just happened to be that when the system went down, Carl had the great idea of going, hey, this is a safety security issue. Let's put it in there. And, you know, we've, we've sent that in uh, last Thursday or Friday. And uh, knock on wood, they've always granted whatever we've asked for. Um, it is a safety. It is a security issue. Um, we are looking at about a three-week turnaround time um, to, to get this in. So it's kind of a, of a necessity to get going. But like so for the moment, the budget source is unrestricted funds from yes, ma'am, from but from FY 2022. Yes, but then we could get an amendment when the grant, which you feel, oh, it, if it comes in, it does, but it would then be restricted to the safety grant. Right. And you are talking about Intercon, Intercon Information Systems is who you're yes. proposing this to and be with, sir? it would be for... Um, I see this, $49,000? Yep, okay. $49,799, and the work would be done on the weekend um, because it's going to be quite a bit, and it's going to be challenging with students are in there. We really don't want contractors intermingling with the students, so there is a little bit of a markup for for weekend work, but um, Skip Anthony is really a great asset to have with that. Yes, he is. I Mr. Mean, Smith, may I make okay, I'm sorry. May I make a motion to uh, approve the procure, emergency procurement of a uh, telephone system for Queen Anne's County High School uh, th through Intercon Information Systems for the total uh, budget so, uh, total amount of forty nine thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars budget source FY twenty twenty two unrestricted funds. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, uh, uh, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, Ms. Bullen. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, we're moving right along. All right. Hey, Mr. President, before we move to the next uh, part of the agenda, I'd like to just revisit uh, when we were discussing the COVID-19 metrics. Mm -hmm. Ms. Harper brought up about a you know, class action, what's going on, you know, what are people going to do? Um, and uh, Superintendent Salins mentioned that there's actually somebody looking at uh, forced vaccines for the schools. Um, let me just put out right now because we've actually, we've obviously had opportunity, all the teachers who have wanted to get the vax have had opportunity to get it. <clears throat> So it would seem like, and we don't know what that percentage is and has not gotten it, but it would seem like that percentage who have not gotten it either have you know, medical reasons why they haven't done it, uh, private reasons, whatever it is. So when, if, I don't think the federal government mandate that President Biden came up with, you know, that applies to private enterprise, uh, private businesses. We're obviously a public body and we're part of a state. So there's some constitutional issues there. Um, but if the state of Maryland does mandate similarly that it did with masks, um, that the teachers must get a vax or, you know, depart. That's gonna cause a lot of heartache, I think, in our school system. So we are gonna to have to think seriously, number one, if that does come down, we're gonna to have, to, so at some point, we're gonna to have to have our own vote. Um, and whatever our board decides, we may have to challenge that, or if, you know, it's a, if it's the board votes otherwise, then we'll enforce whatever Maryland comes up with. Um, but I would urge Maryland, you know, not to go that way um, because we don't want to disrupt any disruptions. You know, it, it would seem that the people have not, the teachers who have, and staff who have not been vaccinated yet, you know, are doing so for a reason because it's obviously available. So that's one thing. And then uh, as soon as we get to the next section, I've got a couple of events that I want to I point just out. want to clarify, Please, yeah. too, that um, when the mandates come through, that they do tie our funding to that. So sometimes we don't, you know, we, we would have to, for instance, if we decided not to mask students, sure. um, that they would withhold funding from us, which would significantly impact our budget. Right. Um, and we would not be able to have business as normal, as right. usual, I should say, as usual. So that's 
something I think the board needs to consider as well. Yeah, and these that's, mandates that come down, um, they're serious and they tie money to them. So right, and that would be a, obviously cost-benefit analysis we'd have to engage in, like we did with before this Maryland mass day, uh, mandate, right. the mass mandate. Um, we, uh, you know, you made a decision and the board exercised its review and, sure. and everything's fine. Yeah, you know, it worked the way it should. Um, I would think that that's, it's that, that risk benefit analysis we're gonna have to consider because we may need to query, you know, if, if, if you need to get the vax, are you gonna Well, they have stay? an option to get, um tested once a week so they have an, an, oh, so an there's option an, an less intrusive option okay. yeah exactly right. so they either have to prove that they've been vaccinated or they have to be subjected to showing the school district that they have a negative covid test each week right okay so there is an option you're not forcing someone to go get vaccinated they do have an option yeah, i mean i think you I mean, league i don't think anybody can force somebody to get one right they have an option to opt out for certainly for medical reasons or for whatever or reason. whatever reasons mm -hmm. um but that's that's why I got back to my question earlier when you're telling me we're going to have three. This is just future, and hope this doesn't come down to Pike. But if it did, with only three testing sites, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be some issues there, both with our uh, teachers' association and everything else. Because, you know, where do you go get tested? When and and then do teachers leave their uh, post while they're going to get? I mean, this is. I mean, there's a lot of repercussions I hope the state looks at. And it's, you know, we're, we're you know, our own board, but then if the state puts a road mandate on the state, there could be a lot of issues that just underline that could cause a lot of havoc to a lot of systems, especially one like ours that are small. Yes. Yeah, because we don't have the resources that some of these larger companies or larger districts do. Okay. I think you'll see, I mean, this is just theory, but a lot of people that we've encountered, they're not ready to get the vaccine. They want to just wait a little bit. They're not totally against it, but they're, they want to see what happens, sure. um, FDA approvals. And, you know, December will be coming up on a year that these vaccines have been out in circulation. So I think you may see a little increase in the vaccination rates after after the year has passed and you see the i mean so far it's only pfizer it's been fda approved but as soon as you see some of these fda approvals come through and more time under their belt i think you'll see vaccination rates go up a bit um just so they see how other people fare i mean honestly that's the response we get is i just want to see how everybody else reacts first mm -hmm. um, oh i'm not gonna be the guinea pig mm -hmm. yeah and it uh, you know the mandate depends on too how they mandate it Certain jobs require certain vaccinations to even participate in that employment. So it depends on how they would mandate it and list it as, is it one of those required vaccinations on this required list, mm -hmm. just like childhood vaccinations? Definitely. Or is this a one-time thing because of the pandemic? But, uh, you know, in all fairness, I think Mark makes a vital point and we all, we, we're split board on some of this, which, you know, we, we, we understand that, but, you know, we got to look at the whole picture when we do this, because there's going to be a lot of ramifications, no matter which, what happens, you know, because we you know the problem, not the problem, we still are going to open up schools. We're still going to have students in our school system and we got to operate on a daily basis. We still have employees that we need to take care of. Well, we do, but it's a, you know, it's, it's not a just, it's not an easy decision, no matter how we do it. Okay. You said has something else? Yeah, once we uh, move to the next section, future events. <clears throat> future meetings and events. Future meetings and events. So, uh, faculty art show mm -hmm. is going on from September 11th. It opened up at the Queen Anne's, Count, uh, Queen Anne's County Center for the Arts, mm -hmm. which is on Commerce Street here in town. And uh, it's there's a flyer out there. It says between seven and nine, just a word of warning. I've been there twice. and. Uh, it wasn't open, so I've sent them an email and, and asked to clarify, you know, when their hours are open, when we can go see it, because I do not want to miss this. It, and the, uh, faculty, the art show was this past Saturday from 7 to 9. From 7 to 9, but it's running through October 8th, so the art will be up. Um, okay, I, that I was definitely the, the kickoff, so I was like, if that's what you meant, you missed the kickoff. I don't know, that was the yeah. kickoff for, okay. No, that was the kickoff. But okay, it, gotcha. It, yeah, the flyer says it runs from September 11th. I couldn't make it on that day, but through... Um, October 8th. Gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha, yeah, I've sorry. got a query in and if they can clarify when you can actually access the sure. building, that'd be great. My, my guess is it's... What time are they open? Uh, 11, 11 to 4. Okay. And then there's probably yeah. certain days that that it's open. I did attend Saturday night. It was yeah. very nice. Right, yeah. good. It was and very these well are our done. art instructors. Teachers. These are, yeah, our art teachers. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah any teacher could participate. I saw the video. That yeah, I did too. The video. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it's 11 to 3. That's when they're 11 to 4. 11 to 4. Okay. Well, then, public announcement if you haven't been, I'm going to go check it out. And I recommend everybody go do the same um, because we do have an excellent arts program. Oh, yeah. In my opinion, it's number one in the state from what I've seen. And uh, from what the kids, what we've seen the kids doing, I'm sure that the teachers have some spectacular well, yeah, some uh, talent as well. Mike, yeah, with Michael Bell, yeah. some incredible leadership there. So The other thing is uh, Constitutional Day is the 17th of this month, this Friday coming up. And uh, Dr. Salins has provided the board uh, a list of all the activities that are going on for that day. So thank you so much for that. That's yeah, um, exciting. Obviously, yeah, it's an extremely important document in a day. And, uh, and I'm glad to see that's all going well. And so thanks to the principals and the teachers that were involved, staff, everybody else. And Adam Tolley definitely took the lead on getting that out. And so. Yeah, we got some really neat that. stuff yeah. planned for the day. So great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. That's it. Anything else? Okay. Any other members? <clears throat> Our future meetings on October 6th, we'll have our regular school board meeting, followed by October the 20th, which will be our next work session. So October the 6th is our next regular scheduled meeting. Uh, that's all I have. Anybody else, any business for this evening? Start your motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all.